Hollywood star Adrian Brody and former Formula One ace Mika Salo are in Malaysia to take on one of the toughest, wettest drives on the planet during the monsoon season. Just damn that bang. Carving its way through dense jungle, the Uli Sedili Trail is a brutal assault course of lethal mud-filled swamps and charted river crossings. Oh my God. Unpredictable flash floods. And wildlife that can bite, sting, Ow. and kill. Their ultimate goal will be to reach the summit of the Ulu Sedili Hills, the highest point being a 700 meter treacherous mountain of mud. It's like a wall. Miles from civilization. No way. This is not acting. <laughs> Actor Adrian Brody and former racing driver Mika Salo are in the south of Malaysia bracing themselves for the most daunting road trip of their lives. Hello, hi. Hello. <laughs> As an ex-Ferrari Formula One legend, Salo is more used to the smooth tarmac of an F1 circuit than jungle driving. There's a lot of new things for me, which is, uh, involves driving in a jungle, and uh, of course I've driven a lot of cars, but uh, never in a jungle. And for Adrian, a Best Actor Oscar winner, this promises a whole new radical experience. I'm excited at the prospect of adventure here, and when there's cars thrown into the mix, it just makes it even more enjoyable. Where's this vehicle? Right here? Nice. I'm here to learn, become a better driver. I'm sure there'll be a lot of obstacles, both uh, literal and metaphorical, right? We're going to be relying on this a lot. They're home for the next few days, this especially modified extreme off-road beast. That's awesome. That looks amazing. A 4.2 litre V6 uh, diesel engine. I guess it's enough for the forest. I don't think we need much speed there. No. You see the snorkel? So we'll be this high, I guess, underwater. So what happens when this is above water, but when we're below water? This is the uh, glass breakage device. <laughs> when you're this far underwater. Is there air condition? Uh, I think on. they removed the air conditioner because it's too heavy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the car looks the part. Now, the burning question. Who's, who's driving? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. You go. Paper, paper gets the rock. All right, you're driving. That's it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right. Finally moving. Yeah. So last time I was in Malaysia, I went to see Formula One, and then I went off-road driving on quads. And here I am back, and now I'm off-road driving with a Formula One driver. It's awesome. Anticipating a bumpy, stomach-churning ride ahead, Adrian's leaving nothing to chance. Morfucker. Morfucker is a traditional product. Keeping it with you while you travel helps to take away dizziness and prevent vomiting. I figured we could use it. Want to try it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> now I know why they call it that. Oh, that's disgusting. Adrian and Mika's Ulu Sedili expedition will be extra tough. They'll have to battle 30 kilometers of grueling dirt driving during the height of the monsoon season. Up to 20 inches of rain can fall in a day turning trickling streams into raging torrents. It should take them three days and nights, but dicing with this unpredictable weather can make the trail impassable. This is definitely one of the most dangerous expeditions I'll have been on. 
The environment is one of the most inhospitable known to man and machine. It's going to be extremely dangerous. To give the boys a fighting chance with their mission, they've recruited Malaysian off-road expert, Jerry Tay. He's requested they meet at a local jungle driving school. You've got to know what to expect from the jungle. The flora and fauna can be dangerous. So knowing what to touch, what not to touch. Try and make more noise than usual, just scare the snakes away. All this is the potential dangers of off-roading in the jungle. With so many dangers lurking, driving safely and protecting your vehicle is imperative. Mika and Adrian can learn a lot about off-roading here from the local drivers and me. How to drive in the mud. How to drive a steep hill. The deep ruts. How do you cross over a rut? Uh, Knowing the proper hand signals. Trusting the people around you. You have to winch off the tree in front of you. Jerry's final lesson is the most important. How to winch safely out of a tight spot. It's essential they master this, as getting stranded deep in the jungle can mean life or death. The biggest thing here is for me to learn all these techniques. I got to learn how to use this winch properly. It's good to practice everything possible, so when actually really hit the problems in the jungle, it's, uh, it's good to be prepared. Training over, Adrian and Mika have a 100-kilometre drive to the Ulu Sidili Trail. We're on the edge of civilization now. An ideal opportunity to find out more about your new traveling companion. What, the, what school did you go for acting? I went to uh, American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I took four trains each way to go to school to the worst neighborhoods of Brooklyn, Queens. The insight I gained from character study on all those trains to learning way more about character and human nature than anything I could have learned in the classroom of those four years. Because yeah. I, you know, in New York, there's like homeless people, yeah. businessmen, gangsters, and, and all walks of life, everybody packed into these trains. As for Mika, his childhood was dominated by burning rubber. I was five, we were living uh, a few miles from one race circuit in uh, Finland, and uh, my father put me in the races. I started winning immediately, so one year, I won all 14 races I started. I won uh, Finnish Championship, Scandinavian Championship, a European Championship, one year. Then I got an offer from Japan to drive Formula 3000 in Japan. And they, that was the first time I was getting paid, like a million and a half for me, for racing. I was, I was only 20 years old, they doubled my salary every year. And, and I did it. 11 years in Formula 1. Eventually, Adrian and Mika enter the Ulu Sidili Trail. Here we go. Up to the jungle. But before they can get stuck into their challenge, the locals insist on a traditional jungle blessing. One is for the jungle spirits, and the other one is for our guardians. Like, we believe that every one of us has a guardian, yeah. right? and basically just calling, telling our guardians that we are also entering this, this uh, jungle and that to come protect us. Okay. Yeah. Good. Let's hope it helps. Yeah, that's good. It normally does. <laughs> good. <laughs> but not on this occasion. It's a heavy rain coming. Not the best start to a mission which is about to get serious. Ahead is 30 kilometers of the toughest driving on Earth. Oh man, it's going to be a it's gonna monsoon rain. season. It's going to rain a lot. They have flash floods here too. Just a few minutes in, there's a problem. They're having to negotiate a network of old logging trails through dense jungle. Rather like an overgrown maze, it's extremely disorientating. I feel like we're going in a circle, just back to the main road where it's over <sighs> Add torrential rain, and it becomes even harder to stay on course. We are going in a circle, look. 
Look at our GPS. Look. Yeah. That's a complete circle. Unbelievable. <laughs> they turned around again. Oh, boy. We are so lost. The jungle has flummoxed their experienced guide, Jerry. Yes. This won't be so funny if it happens in the depths of the jungle or in the notorious Ulu Sidili Hills. Having lost an hour's precious traveling time, expedition leader Matt McKenney is worried they're falling dangerously behind schedule. We were supposed to cross a river tonight and camp the other side, which is another very, very slow hazard that you have to Oh, run. that okay. sucks. Already, you, you, this, this could put us behind where we won't even get out in time. If we can get out at all, we haven't even come across the difficult stuff. This has just been a slow, slow warm up to it. Coming up nerve wracking river crossings, mega swamps, and bloodthirsty predators. All threaten the team's mission to reach the infamous Ulu Sidili Hills. Hollywood star Adrian Brody and Formula One ace Mika Salo are attempting the toughest, wettest drive of their lives in the Malaysian rainforest. They're taking on the brutal 30-kilometer Ulu Sidili Trail during the monsoon season, complete with river crossings, swamps, and a formidable 700-meter jungle hill. But just one hour into their expedition, they found trouble. Look. Look at our GPS. Look. We are so lost. Now they're way behind their day one schedule of reaching a campsite almost 12 kilometers into the rainforest. With only a few hours daylight remaining, they must get a move on. Oh man, you think it could be any more humid? It's so humid it's raining in the car with the windows closed. In hot, humid conditions, perspiration is far less effective at lowering body temperature. It's all good work. <laughs> I mean, really. Your body has to sweat overtime and can lose more than a pint an hour. In extreme cases, dehydration is fatal. So Adrian and Mika must constantly take on fluids. It's gonna get gnarly. Do my best, all right, buddy? The deeper they head into the trail, the slower progress becomes. Still having fun? Yeah, definitely having fun. <laughs> Hold that. After an hour fighting the jungle, the boys encounter small rivers spanned by rickety makeshift bridges. That's a big drop down there, so that'll hurt. That'll hurt us. We go over. Each time they reach a crossing, it becomes ever more precarious. Now it'll take local guide Jerry to help them navigate a safe path. The most important thing of a bridge crossing is to watch and trust your signal man. Because he can see whatever you can't see in the car. You should see the roads in Queens, come on. It's approaching dusk, and they still have a few kilometers to travel to their campsite. By the time they reach the day's final river crossing, visibility is extremely poor, and the bridge is barely wide enough to take a vehicle. Adrian, bye -bye family, please. Adrian now faces a nerve-wracking test of his driving skills. The problem is uh, the bridge is so slippery, so slow. Okay. So slow, but don't. Do anything yeah, with the throttle, yeah, get a little bit yeah. close, it might just yeah. make it. Yeah. It's a big drop down there, yeah. so. If he gets it wrong, they will plunge eight foot into the water and risk serious injury. Adrian, just make sure you're in first gear low range and do it on tick over. No revs required, okay? Whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Reverse, reverse. Oh my god. 
Adrian is millimetres from tumbling Adrian, over the edge. Oh. Yeah, we are way off the line. Oh. After a scary, narrow escape, he lines up his car once more, but it's almost pitch black. Thank you, Jerry. That was good. Are we, I didn't even see that. Like, I didn't see it. I, I would have gone off that bridge. I didn't see it. It's now 7.30 at night. After stumbling around in the dark for another half hour, they make it safely to camp. Where they find expedition safety expert Old O'Kane looking for hidden dangers overhead. So basically just checking for deadfall, which is um, wood or trees or logs up in the canopy that have been rotted by either termites or by lightning strikes. Deadfall uh, kills more people in the jungle than anything else, than any wild animals, any insects, uh, anything else, second to, to flooding and drowning. I'm going to be in my car. <laughs> Adrian's luxurious accommodation is already waiting for him. A basic army cot in a cramped one-man tent. My last semi-clean shirt goes inside the bag, inside out. Nighty-night. It's unlikely anyone will get a restful sleep, though, as the camp is being besieged by creatures of all shapes and sizes. Just look up here. While most are merely interested in the camp lights, lurking is a parasite that's only after one thing. Blood. I just pulled a leech off my leg. They're being overrun by these voracious bloodsuckers. Leeches thrive in warm, wet rainforests. These extraordinary creatures have 32 brains, three jaws filled with sharp teeth, and a strong sucker for latching onto their prey. As they feed, they secrete an anticoagulant, which prevents blood from clotting. The safest way to remove them is by burning them off or insect repellent. It's important that everyone checks themselves before they go to bed for leeches, under armpits, back of the head, behind the ears, groin, crotch. It ain't no place it's safe. Yeah. The jungle is living up to its hardcore reputation. And for good measure, as they turn in for the night, the monsoon strikes with real vengeance. Their challenge has just got a whole heap tougher. This is a very, very violent thunderstorm. Plus, we don't know what's been happening one, two, three hundred miles away, further upstream. And there could be even more rain, so water's probably still on its way down. So any rivers we were going to cross are now going to be deeper. Malaysia has recorded daily rainfall of over 20 inches during the monsoon season. And after last night's torrential downpour, the ground is completely saturated. Day two's target is to drive eight kilometers to the base of the Ulu Sedili Hills. They'll need to watch out for fallen debris and localized flooding. Adrian and Mika's car is sure to take a battering. So expedition engineer Paul Marsh gives it the once over. We're gonna encounter with the rain we had last night, a lot more trees denting the side of the vehicle, branches that stick up, they can rip brake lines, they can do quite a lot of damage to the underneath of the vehicle. It's a lot more mud, which is gonna be thick and gloopy. So I know that these engines are gonna be running at the top end on the temperature scales. And of course, the oil's got to do its job. This vehicle's got us in here, it's gotta take us out. This is our lifeline. Right, guys, it's 8.25, I want us out of here within five minutes, okay? 
Come on, Mika. Blow this joint. Barely 100 yards from camp, and a monsoon swamp has swallowed them up. It just jammed there, bang. No way. Ten hours of this. They're well and truly stuck and at the mercy of the jungle leeches. Coming up, Adrian, Mika and the expedition crew battle floodwaters. That's up to my neck now. And the boys are forced into their first perilous river crossing. Hollywood superstar Adrian Brody and ex-Formula One legend Mika Salo are tackling Malaysia's Ulu Sedili Trail during the monsoon season. Having battled risky river crossings and menacing jungle leeches, their day two target is to reach a campsite at the foot of the Ulu Sedili Hills. Their expedition mission, climb this 700 metre mound of boggy rainforest to reach the summit of the Ulu Sedili Hills. But for now, their minds are only focused on extracting their car from a leech-infested swamp. It's clear they're in a hole and need rescuing. Keep your head down if it snaps. There's over 20,000 pounds of braking strain on the winch cable. If it snaps, the backlash could do untold damage to both the car and its occupants. Yeah, I think it's safe now. The previous night, there was a violent monsoon storm. And as they battle the next few kilometers, evidence of this is everywhere. Yeah, there's a log down. The slippery, debris-strewn track demands razor-sharp reflexes. Sorry. But even a Formula One racer can't avoid the odd prank. It ain't racing if you're not touching paint. But do you realize what I'm doing all the time? It's all the time what's hitting something is that side. It comes from rally. Always, if you go off the road, always go with that side first. Really? But then I don't hurt myself. How? Selfish of you. Yeah. <laughs> In these conditions, the car's underbelly is at its most vulnerable. OK, it's going to be bumpy now. To avoid terminal damage, Mika must tiptoe his way through the debris. His 4.2-litre V6 engine is loaded with torque, so he's using only tick-over revs to manoeuvre his way. No problem at all. Soon, though, the boys reach an obstacle that's even beyond Mika's capability. Paul, uh, what's the status ahead? Adrian, we've got a situation with the river. It's far too high for us to cross at the moment. Over. Copy that. Oh, no. That might mean we have to go back. Flood water from the overnight monsoon deluge is blocking their path. And their expedition target, the Ulusidili Hills, on the other side. Yeah, Gary, yeah. how deep does this normally, this river? Normally it's about two or three feet deep. OK. We've got to go and test it, but we reckon it's at least five feet deep, maybe more. And our maximum is probably around four. Wow. Yeah, okay. Full safety, okay. yeah. Yeah. So this this water change is a result of last night's Probably last downpour. night, yeah. Uh, it was pretty torrential, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm floating now, right. almost. So. Well, to measure it. The flow looks strongest just there where you are now. 
One cubic meter of water weighs 1,000 kilograms, or one metric ton. If there's significant flow and the water level rises above the wheel arches, the force exerted on the car body can easily flip it over. That's up to my neck now. Yeah. That's way too deep for our car. Keep going. Yeah. Ah. If, it, if there was no flow, it was just a big muddy puddle. Well, that would be fine, but... It would be a lot safer. It's, it's you've got the depth and the flow, so you've got two dangers thrown in. So, Mac, what's our option if this is too strong? We have to find another route. Another route round. Having braved the river leeches, jungle specialist Aldo Kane leads a reconnaissance team for an alternative crossing. But after half an hour struggling through dense undergrowth, they can't find a route through. Let's get out of here. This is now a race against time. With no options left, the team decide to turn back the way they came and make a dash for the Ulusidili Hills from the south. We're not going to be beaten by the Ulusidili Trail. The problem we've got is that to try and tack it from the south, it's going to be very challenging, uh, bearing in mind that uh, everything we would have come down, we've now got to climb, so it's going to be much tougher for us, but uh, we're not going to give up. All right, Mac, let's get a move on. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of this jungle, quick. As they retrace their tire tracks, the jungle conspires against them. Oh, I got a leech. Ah, stop, 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 stop. In, a, in the pants. In my pants, yeah. Leeches are like alien creatures. They're so creepy to me. They yeah. latch on and suck your blood, like, visibly within moments. Oh, leeches, malaria, deadfall, chainsaws. <sighs> A lot of stuff out there. Let's keep going faster. Let's keep going. As time drags on and the prospect of another night drive looms, Mika puts his foot down. It's about to get crazy. Crazy in here. Driving at full pelt, he powers out of the jungle and picks up the Ulusidili Trail from the south. They're now 10 kilometers away from their target, the Ulusidili Hills. Good job. <laughs> <That's dumb. coughs> I do that too. I sneeze twice usually from this gum. Here you come. <coughs> <coughs> Two, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> As they venture back into the trail, it's not long before they're fighting the jungle again. Oh, you have the window open. Kidding me? <laughs> and confronting another major river crossing. The bridge is washed away in the monsoon rains. What are we going to do now? <sighs> There's no way we're getting across here. No, no one's getting across here. Having failed to reach the Ulusidili hills from the north, it appears they're thwarted once more. There's a shallow point there. Let's try there. All right. Let's go there. Yeah, go down there and I'll, I'll go check it out. This may just offer an alternative route. But Adrian must enter the leech-infested water to make sure. I think this is fine, though. To here? Yeah, yeah that's good? fine. That's fine. Yeah, so you want to go on this bank. It's, it's, it's nice. Yeah, straight shot. This is a little deeper. OK. Yeah, don't, I don't, don't, I don't, don't go, go there. here. OK. OK. Good. Adrian's never done this before. No. If he's missed a submerged log, or a giant boulder, they could be in big trouble. Easy. Easy.
boys are now coming to the end of the day's gruelling nine-hour drive. In these ultra-humid conditions, it's easy to sweat 10 litres and lose eight kilograms in weight. Oh, God. Oh, let me get some air. Associated salt loss affects muscles and nerves and can lead to a metabolic condition called hyponatremia. Symptoms include cramps, vomiting, convulsions, and hallucinations. It's about 38 degrees outside. Inside it's about 50. And the car's hot and full of leeches. <laughs> it smells like hell. Yeah, but that's you. You sure? <laughs> you sure, buddy? <laughs> oh, God. Look how close we are. In the distance are the Ulusidili Hills. Tomorrow will be make or break for their Malaysian jungle mission. <laughs> the next morning, expedition engineer Paul Marsh devises a test to make sure Adrian Amika's car is ready for this challenge. Driving a four-wheel drive vehicle in low gear through deep mud uphill pushes the engine to the max, sending oil temperatures to almost 200 degrees centigrade. If the oil oxidizes under this heat, it will break down and turn into sludge and cease to do its job of protecting the engine. The critical element for any expedition is a failure on a component. And your engine, the drive lines, they're critical components. If these fail due to heat or breakdown of any sort of manner, you have a real problem. So definitely the heat has affected the oil. The oil has actually turned slightly darker. But what I have noticed, there's no oxidation element traces. That's very reassuring for me. This oil is doing its job. It's protecting the engine. That is what we need in these jungle conditions. Their goal is to reach the summit of the Ulu Sedili Hills. But to do that will mean tackling a notorious 700 meter boggy incline. And to make things even tougher, they've received warnings to expect another monsoon deluge. So driving honors for this ultimate off-road challenge naturally go to Adrian. Well, it's, um... It'll be interesting. You know, I, I'm sure it's going to be more difficult than I anticipate, for sure. Yeah. I, I, I kind of know what we're headed for. It's going to be serious stuff. It's crazy to drive through this. This is a serious job. Yeah. This is so great. After six kilometers of relatively simple off-roading, the boys reach their target. Oof. Stop here. So that doesn't look very good for us. Not good at all. It's like a wall. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where you are. Yeah, Don't go into that right rut. Yeah. There. Don't go there. No, keep the right wheel over there. Oh, OK. Good. Go for it. You missed it. I, no, I didn't miss it. Slipped in. Every failed attempt is churning up the mud. Soon the track will be undrivable. After 20 mud splattering minutes, oh, yeah. they've gone nowhere. It looks like Adrian will not be crowned King of the Hill after all. Coming up, the Ulu Sedili climb more than lives up to reputation. Oh. 
and Adrian's resolve is tested to the limit. No way. Star of the silver screen, Adrian Brody, and former F1 racing driver Mika Salo have spent two days and nights battling everything the Malaysian jungle can throw at them. Their mission, to reach the summit of the Ulusidili Hills, is at a critical stage. It's the final day of their expedition, and Adrian, who's tasked with driving this challenge, is hitting a muddy wall. Okay, there's no way. The first part of the hill climb is the steepest and most demanding. If they can't conquer this, it's game over. That wasn't bumper. Their only hope now is to try and winch their three-ton vehicle. So if the winch blows, we're done, right? Yep. Then we walk home. And you walk home. Good luck. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you want to double them down, right? Put them... The blue plastic traction mats will provide grip. Okay. That's With those in place, they're ready to go. OK, I want to pop the hood then as a safety measure. If the winch line snaps, it could be fatal. The car's hood will protect Adrian, while a plastic sleeve will help stop a broken cable flailing around and hitting Mika. Can you see me here? Yep. I can see you now. All right, first gear? Yes. OK, let's go. OK. Winching. I don't think it can pull us out. But Mika's determined Adrian will succeed with his mission. Not moving. The rut is too big. Try less revs. The front front wheels up in the air completely. We just wheel straight. Finally, they begin to creep up the muddy hill. We're at the end of the line now. We need to pull it up there. Every 15 metres, they must reattach their winch cable to a new tree and start the process all over again. Winch in. Keep winching. Just one more. Drive. Okay. Right. right. Other way, other way. Keep winching. Stop, stop. This is not acting. Oh. At last, they clear the steepest part of the climb, and the summit's almost in their grasp. But the expected monsoon deluge has just begun. Adrian's final test will be to blast through a rutted, boggy section to the summit. So give it some juice here, huh? Wait, let's up. Okay, we can go. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. Adrian and Mika have conquered the Ulu Sedili hill climb and made it to the summit. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Look good. That was fun. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. We made it. We survived. So let's pack things up and go yeah. home. <laughs> and this is fun. This is nuts. But the boys aren't out of the woods yet. With the ground turning boggier by the minute, they need to shift it before they become trapped. That was exciting. <laughs> Oh, good challenge, though. Really good challenge. Something to remember for a long time. Yep. As they triumphantly drive back out of the trail, they reflect on three days battling the jungle. Monsoon conditions, energy sapping humidity, and the constant menace of jungle leeches. You can't do this without a good team. No. I wouldn't know where to begin, so. This I'll is just no have way. a knife, gun, and a jeep. That's it, and get lost. And then shoot myself, probably. <laughs> At the end of a long, intense day's drive, Adrian and Mika leave the Ulusidili Trail for good. Good stuff, dude. You're a good, you're a good travel companion. That was fun. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Their trusty vehicle has delivered them back to civilization thanks to one vital ingredient. We pushed this truck through extremes in the mud, uh, driving in low range, four wheel drive, revving it really hard, running winches for sometimes you know hours, and having just drained the soil to see that it actually requires not even a top up. Well, you couldn't ask for better. This fully synthetic oil has done its job. Machine has triumphed, and so have Adrian and Mika. I know that an experience like this has a profound effect. I really came here to not be just an observer, but to really be the, be the adventure or share that responsibility with somebody. Mika's great. Mika's like, uh, <laughs> he's an alpha male. It's good to be around people that Go for it. I really appreciated that. It it propels you further. Adrian's good fun. Uh, we had a good laugh in the car. It was it was life changing experience there. Yeah. It was I've never seen jungle so close. It just amazes me how drained I am after being a few days there. I drove myself to extreme on these ones. I guess we're all driven to extremes, and uh, I like that. We we got one life that I know of, so I'm I'm gonna live it.